Exploring lakes, rivers, and reservoirs across the country with an unyielding goal to enlighten viewers from a fisheye perspective. Come along and we'll investigate the habitat. Much more than a fishing trip, this is an eye-opening aquatic experience. Welcome to Kim Stricker's Hook and Look. Sight fishing is a developed art, whereby the angler first visually spots the quarry, makes a lure choice, then most prominently makes an accurate presentation in hopes of provoking a strike. Patience, technique, optics, water clarity, all faculties that merge into one observable statement. Look at that fish. It's a picturesque commute along Gross Point, Michigan's Lakeshore Drive as the Hook and Look crew make their way to launch on Lake St. Clair. Accompanying Kim on today's program is Seagar Assistant Marketing Manager, Brian Evans. The smallmouth spawn has been in full swing and the two anticipate a pleasurable day of sight fishing. We're looking at eight feet deep. Yeah, seven, eight foot, but we'll get up into six foot too. There's, there's beds all up and down yeah. that edge. If you see a shiny spot coming up. Calf to it. See, there'll be dark boulders and things like that. I see one right there. I'm gonna cast near it. They put their beds next to boulders, logs, weed beds. Just dance that little old Ocho in front of their face. Can't stand it. There you go. <clears throat> Any size? Nope. Uh, Decent, no. Decent male. I'll help you out. But they are strong fighters, man. Yeah. Hear him <laughs> pulling that drag? Not too bad a fish. <clears throat> there you go. That's actually getting better. He, yeah. He ate that. <laughs> You're getting with the program. Beautiful that's, small. That's a little, little better male, but uh, still the male's garden. As the two continue to rummage the fertile vastness of the Mile Road Flats, they have little difficulty locating numbers of fish, yet, so far, are somewhat disappointed in the size. These are just little males. Little males, where are the good ones? Then they go right back. They go right back to their own bed? Right, right back to the bed, especially when you get them right back in the water. Don't let your boat drift way back. Mm -hmm. It's a good time for the power poles to drop one if you've got to keep it out of the water very long. But the longer you keep it out of the water, the further you drift away from it, the less likely it is to go back to its nest. Where's those beds at? Oh, there's one. Look at that. Look how big that bed is. Ooh, I gotta catch that one. That looks like it. They have a good one on it. There he is. And it's a big one. It's a big one. It's the kind we want. <laughs> That's a good one. Man, every now and then there's still a big one on the on the bed. Look at this, look at this pig. Oh yeah. Nice fish. You know it. We'll just work him to the net nice That's and it. slow. He's got that sliver in his mouth. <laughs> Right there. Good job. Yeah. That is a beautiful fish. That is a Lake St. Clair special right there. Look at that fish. Great fish. That's good fish. There's a lot of males right now on the beds, but still, if you keep plugging around, you're going to find some of the better ones. 
If you like what you see on today's program, be sure to like us on Facebook as well. We'll be right back. Hook and Look is brought to you by Strike King Lure Company, number one in fishing lures. Seagar, trust Seagar when everything is on the line. Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Aquaview, reinventing underwater cameras. And by Indian River, Michigan Tourist Bureau. Pure water, pure trails, pure north. Welcome back to the smally rich water of Michigan's Lake St. Clair. As the Coast Guard diligently conducts its aerial surveillance, Kim's guest Brian Evans repetitively casts a drop-shotted four-inch ocho to an attentive male guarding its brood. There you go, I told you, I told you. <laughs> How many times did you have to cast to it though? Four. <laughs> there you go. A good, solid, respectable fish. How you doing? All right, eight. He ate that. No question about it. No question. That that uh, Ocho, that's Strike King's four inch Ocho, they make a few different sizes, but that was a new color of last year. It's called Glacier. There are a number of lures you can present effectively while sight fishing, but today we've chosen a four inch Ocho stick worm, rigged wacky style above a 3 8 ounce tour grade tungsten drop shot weight. The basic drop shot rig consists of a number one drop shot hook tied approximately nine inches above the weight. When attaching the Ocho Wacky style, I like to use an Owacky tool to slide a little rubber gasket on the worm. You then run the hook under the gasket and not through the bait. This helps prevent the worm from easily tearing off. To sight fish properly, there's no doubt you've got to have a good pair of polarized sunglasses to knock the glare off. And you know, I use the S11s, you're using the S11s. I was pretty impressed with the uh, overall clarity of these glasses yeah. when I first tried them on. But you definitely gotta have it, because I mean, it's, it's hard enough to see the beds with the chop on the water. Aquaview has been developing a new accessory that will help when sight fishing conditions are less than favorable. It's a telescopic pole that allows you to accurately control the direction of the Aquaview camera to a depth of over 10 feet regardless of overcast skies or a chop on the water. This particular pole was an early prototype model, but nevertheless proved to be a useful tool. Well, there he is right there, look at that. Yep, there he is. <laughs> There's another one in the background. Yep. That one looks a little bit more active. Isn't that cool? But by use of this, you can see what the fish are doing. It looks like it's a pair. They're getting ready to spawn. Look at that. He's coming right at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that awesome? That's great. But it makes it so easy with this extension pole because you can adjust it. You know, I can follow that fish. But it's a good way to find out what the fish are doing. Are they, are they just in the process of spawning? Are they guarding eggs? Are they guarding fry? This is, looks like a pair that's just getting ready to get active. Another great use for the telescoping pole is having the ability to laterally probe the shadows under boat docks and pontoons with stealth-like precision. Whoa, I just saw a fatty down there. Get him, he'll get it. There we go. Not Here we bad. go. That's not a bad fish at all. <clears throat> not a bad fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, it's like a semi truck in the water. Yeah, oh. that's a good Man, one. this is a great fish. Today we spooled up with 20 pound Seaguar Smackdown braided line. The reason for this is because the braided lines, they cast so much better. And in addition to that, they're thinner in diameter and just incredibly strong 
and sensitive line. We topped this off with a Brazex 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader. And the reason behind that is the fluorocarbon leader adds an invisibility aspect to this. So the fish cannot see it, but yet it maintains a very sensitive connection between you and the lure. Just caught this fish, 10 pound of Brazex tied to a Smackdown braided line. He barely tapped it, but with the sensitivity of that braid to fluoro leader, you felt every bit of it. Let me show you how I connect the braid to the fluoro. I use a double uni knot. Start by overlapping the two lines approximately seven inches. Then form a loop with one of the tag ends and hold it between your thumb and finger. Next, run the line through the loop seven times. Wet the loop then cinch down by pulling on the tag end, forming the first uni knot. Now, switch around and repeat the same with the other line. Form a loop with the tag end and hold it between your thumb and finger. Again, run the line through the loop seven times. Wet the loop and cinch down by pulling on the tag end, forming the second uni knot. Now wet both lines and pull the two knots together tightly. Finish by closely clipping the two tag ends. And there you have a double uni nut. A strong connection that will cast through your rod guides well. Now the only way of doing this any better is to actually <laughs> physically get in the water and we're gonna do that. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Stick around. A revealing underwater segment is coming right up. Welcome back to Hook and Look. While Kim prepares his dive gear, Brian Evans dons the headset in anticipation of taking part in what we refer to as the Hook and Look experience. I'll see you in an empty bed. I'm seeing some good fish here and there, just kind of cruising. I thought this was going to be like shooting fish in a barrel. Based on my brief surveillance, it didn't take long at all to figure out that the spawn in this area of the lake was in its latter stages, at least for the most part. The majority of the smallmouths I did encounter were males guarding wads of swim-up fry. I'm seeing a lot of empty beds. One thing I am seeing, I am seeing some gobies. I'm seeing a lot more gobies this year than I have in this recent past. Will those gobies, will they eat the uh, fry from the bass after they spawn? Yep, they'll eat the eggs, they'll eat the fry. If the fish gets pulled off the bed and it doesn't get back to the bed in time, yes, the gobies will come. Go ahead and cast now. Yes. That's a yes. Let me cast again. I guess I didn't get close enough. Do you see the bed I'm looking at? I can see your tank and bubbles. I don't see the bed. Oh, I see ya. Cast more to your right. You're awful short. I need you to get your boat closer here. You're casting four feet short every time. One thing I really learned from the experience is I thought I was casting to the bed when in fact I was coming up short each cast. To get to the center of the bed, I had to make a cast about five to six feet past it to let the weight sink down to the bottom to the center of the bed. When light enters and exits the water's surface, it is bent by refraction. As a result, submerged objects appear to be shallower and closer to an angler as he gazes into the water. 
This phenomenon can be easily seen and understood while placing a pencil at an angle into a glass of water. Air and water have a different refractive index, causing the object to appear to bend at the water's surface. This is due to the light rays bending as they pass through one medium to another of varying density. Therefore, a sight fisherman needs to compensate by presenting his cast further past the intended visual target in order to not come up short. That's interesting. From up here, it looks like I'm casting right into that bed. That's what I told you. You've got to cast past the bed. Make it look like it's going past, and you'll go right in the right spot. I think I can see the bed now. The fish is pissed off. He's chasing all these gobies. So, Mike, you just got to put it in the right spot. It's a nice fish. Real nice fish. I want you to catch this one. And this one is locked. We'll catch this one. There you go. That's perfect. Leave it there. Just leave it. Now shake it a little bit. Just leave it there, leave it, leave it. Ow, set the hook, set the hook, baby. All right. There you go. There we go. That's a nice Lake St. Clair smallmouth. <laughs> He's pulling drag like you wouldn't believe. Brian learned a lesson in light refraction and that presentation accuracy is really key when it comes to sight fishing. Once he made the proper cast and placed the lure directly on the bed, it didn't take long to hook up. Now all we need to do is work on his landing technique. Oh, sh He came off the hook. <laughs> oh, gosh. I didn't have a net man. Yes, did not have a net band. I can't help it. I was trying to, to swing them in. Man, I can't believe I lost that fish at the boat. After so many casts trying to get that fish to bite, I should have reached for the net. But it was so cool to be a part of the hook and look experience and communicate with Kim underwater to actually know what my bait was doing and how the fish were reacting to it. This stage of the spawn has uh, progressed a lot more than I thought. We might want to try a caffeine shed this afternoon. Hook and Look will be right back after these messages. Stay tuned. This portion of Hook and Look is brought to you by Ranger Boats. Still building legends one at a time. Evinrude. Introducing the all new Evinrude E Tech G2. Sims Fishing Products, the choice of professional guides and anglers worldwide. Dr. Edward Lonieski, ethical and effective stem cell therapy. And by Sportfish Michigan, your source for the top charter captains and guides. Based on his underwater observations, Kim opts to try a weightless four inch caffeine shad, which is one of his favorites for smallmouths when they're guarding fry. This clear water and that right. white caffeine shad. Got, they just, knowing that they're guarding the fry too, that they're more out and about. And when they eat it, they're going to annihilate it they'll, too. They'll eat it. Ooh, there's a big one. There's a big one. Oh, there you go. There's a good one. Oh, he come up for it. it. He's not as big as I thought it was, but it's a, another good one. Oh, whoa. I thought he was a big, big one. He hit it good. He did. He hit it like a big boy. That he did. They act differently when they're locked on the bed or when they're garden fried. There's no question. And this one just came up and, and ate that. Oh, he, had, he, he, he really ate, ate that. it. Really. <laughs> Not long after landing that fish, the craziest thing happened. Out of the blue, a giant smallie suddenly breaks and thrashes frantically across the surface then leaps and completely flips as if he was desperately trying to throw a lure. And perhaps that was the case, but we also observed two other monsters hanging close by it. Look at there, look at there. Another big one. Yep. Got him, I got him to bite. 
Ah, look at that big black beauty. Oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> Good job, man. That is what oh, we're after. Oh, that is the giant. That is a beautiful fish. One. Oh, man, look, look at that. Oh, is that a gorgeous fish? I'm a caffeine wow. shed. Look at how dark that fish is. Yep. Man, look at that. I'm hooked. There we go. Oh, man. Thank you for biting my caffeine shed. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. He had to have been gar a garden fry down there. But that is a beautiful Lake St. Clair smallmouth. The big ones that are down there, they're kind of few and far between right now. But uh, they will the stage, bite. For the stage they're in. Awesome. Awesome indeed. I want to thank Brian for joining us and for Seaguar's continued support of our program. On our next episode, we expand on the virtues of a weightless caffeine shad when we experience an overnight mayfly hatch in Indian River. The water surface was literally covered with the bugs and those big mullet lake smallies were on the feed. A transitory lesson in entomology next week on Hook and Look. Hook and Look is a Kim Stricker production.